O'Shea, I want to start off the court and talk a little bit about the vlog because I find it fascinating. Mm. First of all, where did that passion start? You take stills too when you're in the cities? Where yeah, yeah. where did this start for you? Um, honestly, I, I took a trip to Italy this summer and you know I didn't have a camera back then. I was using my phone and stuff. I just felt like we do so much interesting stuff, like you know traveling and being around the team. I vlogged a little bit back when I was when we had the bubble, like years ago in yeah, Orlando. Right. Um, that's when I first started and, and learned how to edit and whatnot. I learned a little bit about cameras, but I stopped for a long time. And then I just kind of wanted to pick it up again, um, thinking about all the stuff that we were gonna do and accomplish this season. How do you decide when to film and what to film? Uh. I mean, my, like my vlogs are more like my daily life stuff. So, you know, whenever I have the, the urge to film, I just pick the camera up and just whatever I catch that day is what goes in the vlog. Um, so yeah, I, I never really plan much. You know, like we, when we go on trips, that's kind of when it's most interesting because, you know, fans want to see like how traveling is and like what we do in different cities. And those are the ones I enjoy because I get to see, you know, different parts of the city that we go to. Um, so yeah, it's really like, it's my daily life. I just pick up whenever I feel. Like vlogging, whatever. The road is really when I have the most time to do those things yeah, as well. 100%. Uh, who likes being filmed the most? Um, honestly, Delano. Anytime I have the camera on him, he always has something to say. Um, JT likes more of the pictures. He always posts for a picture. Yeah. I don't think I ever caught him off guard yet. He, he's always just camera ready. Is that a goal? No, 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 no. no. I, I like to make sure everybody knows that the camera is there. I like to announce it on the plane or if I'm in the locker room. Um, just so, you know, not trying to be that guy. Um, That's fair. That's yeah. what I was going to say next, is who likes it the least? Who oh, runs Sfee. away every time? Sfee. Really? Yeah, he hates it. He always says, stop filming me, bro. Stop filming me. Joe Mazzullo would have been my guest right there. Yeah, I think I've only recorded him like twice. But whenever he sees it, he like asks me questions like, are you really recording this right now? <laughs> I'm like, yes, bro. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, I have more questions about Joe, but that'll come later. Uh, for the vlog, you sat in on a couple of media sessions. Mm -hmm. One in Dallas, you sat with us in a press conference room and then also in some scrums when we were in Sacramento. What'd you think? Uh, yeah, the reporting stuff is not for me. <laughs> it's, I can't think of like questions. I mean, there the only couple questions I asked were okay, but yeah, that's not for me. You got any tips, right? It's harder than it looks, it, isn't it? It's harder than it looks, you know. You don't want to ask the same question that was just asked. You don't want to ask a dumb question. Um, and you got to think of something that's actually going to get a decent answer out of somebody. So that's I'm like, yeah, no. Can't. You did ask Jalen about dunking mm -hmm. and what goes through his mind when he's in the air. What do you think about him in the dunk contest? Oh, no. I already know the type of dunker he is. In-game dunker. I feel like I'm the same way. I and that doesn't translate? No, no, no. It doesn't translate at all. It's like, it's like, um, like three-point contest. You know what I'm saying? Like last year, who was it? Julius Randle did three-point contest. You know business being there. Not saying he's not a good shooter, but like it's different when you're in game and when you're when you're supposed to just sit there and shoot, shoot, shoot. You know? Yes. And like dunkers like that, like JB's an in-game dunker, like adrenaline in the crowd, something gets him going. If he sees a defender down there, he's gonna jump a little higher, you know? But to like have what is it, thirty seconds or three tries to And to come in cold too. You go you come in with minimal stretching and then try to hop over cars, that doesn't yeah, seem no. like the best idea. No. That's what I'm saying. Like there's dunkers and then there's in game dunkers. It's a little different. Uh, fair enough. Back to Joe. Mm -hmm. He told us recently that he likes to, or tries to talk to every guy every day for a couple of minutes. What are those yeah. conversations like? Uh, you know, me and him, I feel like we, we like to joke around a lot. I like to joke around a lot. Um, he's not, like, he's serious at times, but you know Joe, he's not really serious all the time. He comes off pretty serious to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> but, I don't know, most of the stuff that we talk about is always like, you know, kind of if it's basketball wise it's you know how can I do something better I will ask that question like, how can I do something better where can I fit in more like what do you see um, but other than that we, we just talk about random stuff you know I feel like that's helped me a lot um, feel more confident to go up to him if I feel anything um, and him as well to come to me if he, if he sees anything um, just building that, that relationship I think it's a good thing that he's doing you know trying to talk to everybody because you know it's hard in the flow of the season you kind of want to focus on you know the next game and the guys that are playing or um, what we have in front of us. So him doing that, I think, really helps. Shifting to basketball, he did just mention he feels like you were one of the guys new this season who has really earned the trust of the coaches and your teammates. What's enabled that? Um, for me, I think it's just really focusing on, like, throughout the game, you know, focus on where I could fit in um, and not just hoping that I, I get a chance, you know. Because um, once I'm out there, like, it's, it's, it's easy to, to fall victim to, like, 
thinking, oh, I'm not getting the ball or I'm just running up and down. But I, I really try to like insert myself into the game because you know it's only going to benefit everybody else and, and me as well. Um, can't just we, if I'm if I'm not doing that, they're playing like four and five, five and four. You know, if I'm just a body out there. And I think me being real like attentive and um, asking questions has really, you know, like you said, gained that trust. And um, yeah, I mean, it's cool to hear, cool to hear that you know he feels that way. And you know, I feel like he knows now. Anytime he throws me out there, I'm, you know, I'm ready to, to, to play the right way and, and help the team win. He also pointed out, though, your learning curve is pretty steep there because you play with all different groups anytime you're out there, and you never know who you're going to be out there with. How challenging is that? It's tough. It's tough, and you know, we, that's one of the things we talk about. And he understands. Um, you know, Joe's been around basketball for a very long time, so he understands that side of it. You know, it's never easy for someone to go in there with guys you haven't played with. Um, but, you know, that's why we have practice like today and the other practice we had a couple of days ago where, you know, he, he makes lineups like that where in game he knows that we, we had a practice to go over it. Um, and that stuff also helps, you know. Um, but yeah, it's tough. But at the end of the day, you know, it's basketball and just got to go out there and play. You talk about the mindset you have to have when you're on the floor. Is that a big shift for you? Is that something that you've had to, I mean, coming from Indiana where you were a starter mm -hmm. at points in your career? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, changing your whole role, um, kind of not the way that I play, but just the role in general. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It's definitely, it's definitely a, like you said, a learning curve and something that I've gotten good at. You know, kind of started off a little slow, but gotten a lot better and still getting better at it. Um, but like I said before, you know, it's basketball, and this is what I do. It's what I love to do. And, yeah, it's just going to keep getting better, I feel. Mentally as well, with the trade deadline coming on Thursday, what is this time like for you and then for the team as a whole? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I feel like for me personally, I, I can't speak on anyone else, but for me personally, I feel like I've gotten to the point in my career where, like, you know, things happen and, you know, things are going to happen whether, whether we like it or not, you know. Um, I've seen, you know, I've went undrafted, been cut, played in the G League, you know what I'm saying? I've done all that. So right now, it's, for me, it's just like, all right, stay ready, stay healthy, and, you know, play when I get a chance. So... Um, I can't speak on anyone else. I don't know how anyone else is feeling, but for me, that's kind of how I look at it. Obviously, I want to be here. This is where I want to be, um, playing with these guys and, you know, have a potential chance to do something great. But at the end of the day, you know, I can't, can't control what else happens. You chose to be here this summer. The next opportunity to play is Wednesday against the Atlanta Hawks, who mm -hmm. have won four of their last five, are, are playing much better as of sure. late. What have you seen from them? Uh, you know, Trey's really, really doing this thing. I feel like he's been a top player all season, but now, like you said, they won four of the last five. They're really winning games, really showing teams that, you know, they're kind of clicking and figuring it out. Um, but, you know, so are we. We've been a top team in the league all year. Uh, so we just got to go in that, with that mindset and, you know, remember that that's who we are. Um, knowing that it's going to be a challenging game, we're not just going to uh, walk over them. They're a really good team. They're a lot better than the last time we played them. A lot of the other old guys are playing really well. Um, so that's such someone that we got to know. It's not going to be an easy game, and we have today and tomorrow to prepare for that, tomorrow morning to prepare for that. And I think, um, like I said, today was a good practice going over what they what they do. Um, so, yeah, just knowing that, you know, like I said, it's not going to be easy. You just got to be ready for it. O'Shea, thank you. Good luck. For sure. Thank you. Presented by your New England Ford dealers. Built for America. Built Ford Proud.